T. Okay. If you put this back here, I believe that if you put this back here, you get 1 over m naught. And then you will get that equation of motion. Okay, you will get that equation of motion. So AK and BK are related to each other. Okay. So this are like two, two couple mode equations in time. Okay. These are like two couple mode equations in time. And then you can eliminate one of the two unknowns among them and arrive at this second order derivative equation. One more time, you can eliminate among them, you arrive at this equation, which says that uh, AKT must be something of this form AK0 e to the plus or minus i omega KT, and then BKT is BK0 e to the plus or minus i omega KT. Okay, it's something of that form. And if you plug this back in here, or plug this kind of time dependence back in here, you get that AKT is equal to plus or minus i omega k m0 dkt. Okay, this is all plane wave solution. Or traveling wave solution, I should call it. Traveling with So in this linear atomic chain, we have this traveling wave solution. And I like to plug this traveling wave solutions back into the Hamiltonian and see how we can simplify the Hamiltonian. And then from that Hamiltonian, I like to connect to quantum mechanics. I okay, like to connect to quantum mechanics via the Hamilton. So let's plug that in. If I plug this in, I will get PL squared T. Okay? It's equal to PL squared T is equal to the square of this function. I think this thing is square it. Okay, a square that function. Okay, I will get the first term square. Okay, I get 2 over n k k p squared. Okay, the reason why I get two terms is because I have a complex conjugation involved. So if I have this term and it's complex conjugation. The whole thing square. Okay, the whole thing square. I will have a term, first term multiplied by the first term, last term multiplied by the last term. Okay, but those are all multiplied by the complex conjugate, and those becomes magnitude a k square. Okay, and then I get two of that. So I put a two there, and then I have the cross terms. In the cross terms, the exponentials wouldn't cancel each other. E to the i k l a will not cancel each other. Okay? So if I look at the cross term, I will have 1 over n e to the 2i kl k a k squared t plus the complex conjugation of this uh, cross term. It will be two of them. Okay? This is purely real. This comes from the first term multiplied by the first term over here last term multiplied by last term, and then the cross term gives me this plus this complex conjugation. Okay? You can see that this thing is oscillatory as L changes. Okay? If you change L, it's like you change the position of the atom. And this thing is oscillatory with respect to L. Okay? And I can do the same thing with uh, QL2. 
QL minus QL plus 1. Okay, if you look at this, okay, if I plug this in here, okay, if I change L only in the first term change, so I'm going to have this thing equal to 1 more square root e to the i KL, KLA. Okay, the first term will give me just 1, and then if I shift it by 1, I get a term that looks like something like this. Okay, P K T plus this complex conjugation. If I take the difference of this, this would be hap what happened. I'd like to be able to substitute in this eventually. If I like to substitute in there eventually, then I should square this. Okay, but before I square that, I'd like to point out the fact that this simplifies to um, e to the i k a over 2, 2 i sine of k a over 2. Okay, that simplifies to that. Now if I square this thing, QL minus QL plus 1, whole thing squared. Again, I have the first term multiplied by the complex conjugation of the first term. Okay? And then the last term multiplied by the complex conjugation of the last term. And then I have the cross term. So I uh, find this magnitude square. Okay, I would have 1 over n, the magnitude of this would become 1, and then I have this 2 becoming a 4, but then I have 2 of this term, so I should multiply by a 4 over there, and then I have the square of this sine square k a over 2. So the first term will contribute to something like that, times magnitude of b k t squared. Okay? And then I have the cross terms. I have the cross terms, okay? The cross terms, the phase would not cancel. I would just call it oscillatory term, just like something like this. This would be oscillatory. It would be proportional to e to the q 2i k l a plus its complex conjugation. Okay, the oscillatory term would look something like that. Okay? Now if a sum, if a sum over one long period of the lattice from l is equal to 1 to n, the oscillatory terms will sum to zero because they're oscillatory. Or they consist of sines and cosines. And even some sines and cosines of one full period, they will all disappear. So if we plug those two terms into this Hamiltonian, the Hamiltonian simplifies. Okay, because the oscillatory terms will cancel each other. Leaving only behind the non-oscillatory term, which is this term and that term. These two terms have no dependence on L. Okay? So when you do this sum, you will just get a number of n. So if that is the case, then the Hamiltonian becomes simplified as <coughs> because the n would cancel with this n, okay? So finally it's just 1 over n0. There's a half there that cancels that too. A k square. Okay, plus 4f sine squared ka over 2 bk squared. Okay, those are functions of time. So the Hamiltonian becomes greatly simplified under the single mode picture. If you assume a traveling wave on this linear atomic chain, the Hamiltonian becomes that simple. Okay, but bk and ak are related to each other. BK and AK are related to each other by this. This one represents displacement, the other one represents momentum. Okay, this represents displacement, this represents momentum. And you can actually recognize that this actually is just M0 omega k squared. Omega k squared that we have derived earlier. Okay, that is just equal to that. And then, uh, because g is equal to f over m, okay, if you remember the definition for g in this picture of it, okay, g is equal to f over m. G equal to 
is f over m naught. So if that is the case then, then we can choose to write this entirely in terms of the variable a or the variable b. Okay? So if I choose to write this in terms of the variable a or b, the Hamiltonian looks even simpler. Okay, it can be written as 2m0 omega k squared bk as a function of time squared. Okay, the Hamiltonian looks even simpler. Very, very simple. Okay. Are there any questions so far? What I'm trying to show is that if you have a single mode propagating on the linear atomic chain, the Hamiltonian is really very simple. It's just the amplitude of the mode squared. Okay, very simple. And then we will connect this with quantum mechanics. And what physical picture do you see of this mode? On well, this linear atomic chain, as that mode is propagating on this linear atomic chain, okay, as it propagates, these atoms will be oscillating as a function of time, as it propagates. It will be oscillating back and forth as a function of time. What frequency is this atom oscillating? <coughs> if you look at all the math here, okay, the frequency of oscillations of those atoms should be. Should be this frequency, right? Because this is the frequency of oscillation of each of the amplitude. If you look at the amplitude, the amplitude is going like this. And then together with this, it forms a traveling wave. But this quantity, if you look at it, it's just going up and down. It's not up and down for this atom, but left and right, left and right, left and right. All of them are doing this. But they're slightly out of phase with respect to each other. Give rise to the propagating point. This is the physical picture it should have. Okay? Once you can see this picture, picture in your mind, then you think about this oscillation. It's a classical harmonic oscillator when they have only one single mode. Can I think about if these are now quantum harmonic oscillators? How would the Hamiltonian change? Okay, because we have greatly simplified the Hamiltonian to an extent that involves only the amplitude of the modes. And when we come back after coffee break, you connect this amplitude oscillation to a quantum harmonic oscillator. Okay, let's take five minutes break and come back and look at how we connect this to quantum mechanics. Okay, let's take a break. <coughs>